You know, one of the most beautiful sounds that I've ever heard in my life is an elk bugle. Folks, we are changing it up this week. We're cooking up some wild game here at the Lazy Tea Ranch in beautiful Wyoming. Join us because you don't want to miss it. You know, before we head over in there to elk camp, hey, let's talk about being prepared. I mean, we're gonna be out there in the elements. It's all about staying warm. We'd like to thank the good folks at Ariat for sponsoring this video. And whether I'm lounging around camp or I'm out there in the wilderness hunting elk, I am layered up and staying warm with these Ariat coats. Now, just as a reminder, there's a link down there below to where you can save 10%. But a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. But hey, let's get back into camp one of my most favorite place to camp in the whole wide world, out in the wilderness. Yeah, away from everything. Look where I got my camp set up. Bath water, dish water, bedroom, kitchen, we got all you would ever need. But in this episode, folks, we are really gonna go back to something that I dearly love, because you know what season it is right now? Elk season. Ain't nothing I love more than hear that old bugle early in the morning to hear them old bulls just talk back and forth and back and forth. You know, now you might not have noticed it, but we have been here shooting some videos in Wyoming, so be sure and check out our Wyoming playlist to get caught up on all these videos. But we're going to make some traditional old elk chili. Really, you could call it chili con carne, which means if you translate that into the normal Okie cowboy language, means chili with meat. You can make chili out of anything. You can make it out of raccoon, you can make it out of possum, you can make it out of rattlesnake, but today we're making it out of elk. And to start this process, I need you to go to the creek. First of all, dip the water out. That's what it's gonna make it best. Oh, you're like getting in it. Four cups exactly. Get that over on a hot fire, get it to warming up. Now, drag out them dried chilies. Y'all have seen me use dried chilies in so many videos, but folks, when you rehydrate those chilies in water, there's so much flavor that you're bringing back out of it. And we're using a Guajillo chili, a Hatch Red New Mexico chili, and we're using an Ancho chili. Just rough chop you an onion, throw it in there, four garlic cloves, let's get it to simmering along so it can get tender. This is gonna really bring about that great flavor that you're gonna get out of there with these chilies in there. But not only that, the broth that is there is the broth that goes back in that chili. We're using a chili stock to go back in here, to go in there with all that good elk meat to get this to go in. I do love me some elk meat, and we're down here at the Lazy Tea Ranch. Not only do they raise some good beef, folks, they have got some good trophy elk here too. Some of them went out hunting for me and brought me back two pieces of meat here. This is pretty fresh. It is about four days ago, but I know some of you are gonna be saying, why are you using that back strap when you cut that up and make chicken fries or make elk steak? And this tenderloin also, when I'm making chili and I'm using elk, I'm gonna start with the two best cuts that I can find on that. And there they are right there, back strap tenderloin. Now, traditionally, this would probably go back to, hey, I'm gonna use a chuck roast or some old neck meat, any stew trimmings that you can just trim off that, that elk or maybe are you using it with deer too? But remember, when you have this elk or have this deer, the most important part is how you process that animal in the field before you ever get it to this point. And if you need to go back and look at sort of harvesting in the way that we clean and take care of an animal, we have a deer video on that as well to where we made deer chili. But use a roast, use whatever you want, trim it there. But you can see that there's a little silver skin still left on here that we have to take off. And this really works better when it's froze, but we'll get it off there just fine anyway. And I do have one camp assistant here today that has traveled with me all the way from Oklahoma to make sure that this is of quality. Mage, can you see him under there, Shannon? He's sort of hiding. Good up. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> dropped on your head, Mage. <laughs> here you go, bud. Good job. The reason that I really like elk meat probably is my preferred big game animal. It is. They're more grazers like cattle are and not so much browsers. And to me, their meat is probably some of the best wild game meat that you're ever gonna get. Now you can see as we move that back strap over and get to this tenderloin, it too has that silver skin on it. So we gotta slice in here and get that off. 
Have you ever camped this, like, this close to water or had this much water near you? The only time that I ever camped this close to water is when it rained like 10 and a half inches in the Paladura Canyon one time and we had creeks where they didn't know it was. When I was guiding elk hunters so many years ago out there in the Gila and we camped by a little old creek, wasn't quite this wide, but it was just a, a very relaxing sound that put you to sleep at night and I never had to go far for water. I like to put it in pretty good bite sized pieces to where it's about like so. You want them some bigger than that, you be sure you go ahead and make them, cut them how you want. But just try to cut them uniform to where everybody has the same time and doneness there. So I figure we got about three pounds of meat there that we cubed up. Really try to remember, keep it sort of the same size. I'm gonna season with our original and we'll give it all a good coating, then we'll toss it about and we'll season some more. Hey, this is quite the kitchen setup. I'd like to thank my good friend Houston Johnson for getting all this going for me here. It is great. We got us some hardwood going because we're gonna need some coals to finish this off. Deep Dutch oven in a shallow little old skillet there. We have to roast some tomatoes. Picked them fresh right off that tomato tree right there this morning, I did. We're gonna need a little lard. now. Years ago, I'd be out there with my uncle and we'd be guiding and he'd say, we should have had some bear grease to put that in. Now, I never used bear lard. I know people that have. Today, we're just gonna use a little Crisco because we just wanna get that meat to where it's browned up, simmered all, got a little good sort of a caramelization on it and then we'll put it back in there and get it to going. Like I say, we're just browning this meat up really good here get some of it to render down in there a little and get us some good caramelization on it. While the one fell in the fire, did you see a jumper? We just want to try to get us a little old crust going on this outside of this where we can lock in all that good moisture. Well, them chilies got good and tender over there, them onion. Make sure that you get them soft enough because you're just gonna just finely chop them. Now, you could do this in the blender, but I'm looking at all this goodness you got right here. And if you blend that, sure, you're gonna get a little thicker consistency out of that. But folks, that is gonna really make some good chili, it is. Now, you go ahead and get that meat browned up really good. Bring it all back over here. We can just go ahead and put this in there right now, we can. The roasted tomatoes that we had over there in the skillet, we just went ahead and we just chopped in there with them chilies and that onion and that garlic. Now, I like to take two more tomatoes and we're just gonna rough chop them a little bit here. I don't want them to disintegrate and fall away. I just want us to have something in there that's gonna stay in that manner as we get it. But I really prefer to use aroma in this if you can. They stay together a little more, I think, as they're cooking. The next part of this might be controversial in a way. It's really a big feud, really, I think, between Oklahoma and Texas. And I think we, it's just Texas. Just Texas. Texas against the world. Yes, and, and we happen to have a, a Texan, a dear friend of mine in camp, and he says there's no beans in chili, but when I was raised, we were really poor and beans went further than meat. Kidney beans is my preferred choice of bean if you're gonna really make chili in there. I think it, it, they're red in color. They got a good rich flavor to them. I like to drain them. Now you can buy the dried ones and just go ahead and cook them up like you would a regular recipe and then put that in there. But this is so much quicker, it is. And Houston's over just snarling right now, Shan, because he's thinking, why did they ruin that elk chili? Time to season it up, it is. And first we're gonna start with oregano. And if this is just dried leaves, if y'all got fresh, you go ahead and use it. Give you a pretty big sprinkling in there. Next, we're gonna go with our chili seasoning. We're gonna go accordingly to that. A little black pepper. Now, we're gonna use about that much beef broth. But remember that water that we boiled them chilies in that come right out of this creek? We're gonna need about four cups of that we are. Well, all the players are in the field and it is time to let the things begin. And then we wanna let it simmer about an hour and 45 to two hours or until that elk meat just falls apart. That's what we're after is that good tenderness. I'll meet y'all at the fire.
You know, I, I got the privilege of guiding elk hunters uh, for about six seasons and uh, met some of the greatest people, but I was in some, some really great country there in the Gila wilderness. And we'd go in before season and you'd get to see these old bulls really when uh, they, they hadn't been chastised or chased around much. Really a, a thing to admire, the beauty uh, that they have, the really the elegance to, to watch an old bull walk out of a, a really thick, piece of timber and just get out into a meta and you know he's fixing the bugle he just raises that old head up just a little and just to hear that and it really gets where you can feel it in your bones to me there's there's not a more peaceful sound you know and when we started to where we would take hunters in we would uh, tell them you need to be in shape not only physically but you need to be able to ride at least 21 miles in because uh, we'd meet at a trailhead uh, we'd pack everything soft panniers and uh, tied on a mule. You get to see some really beautiful country as you're going in across, I think, three different creeks to where we were going there in Lily Park. Not only was I packing hunters in, but also I was the cook and I was the guide. Now, a lot of people had really fancy elk calls back in the day. You know, you'd have a diaphragm call and a lot of them would have them little mufflers they'd put out there. Mine was one piece of PVC pipe that was a half inch. Had an elbow on one end and an elbow on the other end and you put it up here. Now, a lot of people are blowing into that diaphragm. Me, I'm not. You're having to suck air through that tube to get that bugle, and then you're having to end it with a oh, 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 all the way to the end. But you learn to cow call. I mean, I'd sit out there for hours and hours and listen to these old elk and the talking that they were made. Really being a chuck wagon cook and really guiding and cooking hunters is not that much different. It's just, I was packing everything in on a mule. My days would start at the same time, you know. I'd get up 2.30 every morning, but then I was what? First of all, building a fire and making coffee, but then I would have to go catch the lead mule, who we had a bale mule out in the meadow, and you could hear him out there by that bale just clanging. So I'd saddle that other mule, and you'd ride out there, and you'd get them all to follow, and you'd bring them in, and you'd, you'd put morales on them mules. And for, for people that don't know what that is, it is really just a feed bag, and we made ours out of toe sacks, and you just cut sort of the middle out, pull it around their head and tight, and you'd have grain in it, and they would eat breakfast while I was cooking breakfast for the hunters, so I just love to hear a elk bugle. I love to be in God's creation. hours and 45 minutes of goodness. I mean, that stuff simmered right along there, loved in that broth of them chilies to where that elk meat got tender as it could be. And what do you got to pair that with? A spoon, yeah, and some cornbread. You know, we have a lot of cornbread videos we do, and you could pick up a recipe off one of them. And folks, I've been waiting for this moment. I ain't had no really true elk chili like this since 1984, and that bowl is too hot to hold. Now, you can see all the great, rich color in there. And that broth that comes off them chilies is just the flavor that it needs. So I'm going to take this bite right here. Mm. The flavor you get, most of all, is from the Guajillo chili there. When it comes about, when it simmers and get tender, you get that good, rich redness that it's going to give to that broth. But there's sort of a nutty flavor that them chilies bring about when you get in there. So it is oh so good. I'm going to have one more little bite here, Shan. And then, Houston, where are you at? Come over here. I want you to try this because you told me, this is my good friend Houston Johnson here at the Lazy Tea, and he told me a long time ago, it had been forever since he had really eat some chili, and he noticed your bite doesn't have a bean in it, okay? Because I know- There's no beans in chili. There's no beans in your chili, you know what I mean? And he said he hadn't had none of this since he was back on the Wagners. How long ago? Mm. 25 years ago? Yeah. So. Since you took that bite, and you know what happens at these videos, that's the reason I called you up here, Houston. We got to do a little dance, you know what I mean? Because oh. people depend on it. Here, I'll hold the spoon while you dance, but we you just go ahead and bust a move there. Let's see it. There we go. Come on now. Give it, give it all you got. Get in the water if you want to, brother. There you go. Let loose. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. 
Whew, it was a great time today. Brought back some good memories for me guiding elk hunters there in the Gila. And hey, this recipe will be listed down there below and everything you need to know about it. But I just want to really graciously thank the folks here at the Lazy T Ranch for having us out, letting us do this video here in such a great place to do it at. But if you hadn't caught all of them or if this is the first one that you've seen, be sure and check out our Wyoming playlist because folks, we have cooked up a lot of great stuff while we've been up here. But it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag flying over camp no matter where we are. Rest of you, come on in here pretty quick because I'm getting pretty hungry. We'll give you a big old hug. God bless you one and all, and I'll see you down the best elk chili trail you ever see. You know, when you get through, usually we have a bunch of dogs that are standing around camp that are wanting to eat that we're gonna give treats to, but look what we got today. We have these good folks here at the Lazy Tea, and we're gonna feed them. Is it time? Yes, it's time, brother. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the help.